Greetings, everyone. This is Editing Ryan here presenting another supplemental episode of Starship Tempest for you. And this one is an extremely unique, one-of-a-kind type of episode because Tempest talks Shatner in Space! On October 13th, 2021, Captain Kirk William Shatner became the oldest human being ever to officially enter the realm of space. So, we thought this was a great opportunity for us to wake up, grab a rock to Gino, and get on a conference call, and watch the real-time coverage of this historic event. And, since it is the man himself, the one, the only, Captain James Tiberius Kirk, why not underlay the whole episode with the original series bridge sound effect? So, here comes that cue. And now please enjoy The Tempest Talks, Shatner in Space. Um, hey everybody, if you are joining us and if you are hearing this, um, this is a special uh, supplemental episode of Starship Tempest where Travis and Ryan are watching William Shatner take to space. Um, it's nine o'clock in the morning on October 13th, Central, uh, Central Time that is. And we just figured this is a hell of a moment for Star Trek and for us as a group of friends. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. But um, so, hi, welcome. There, this might not be, we're going to be watching a lot and talking, <laughs> but um, this is, this is uh, just something that we just decided to throw together at the last minute. So thanks for joining us. Hopefully it'll be uh, entertaining. And here we go. I don't know if Brian's probably going to joining be. us. It probably won't be. Um, <laughs> I don't know if Brian's going to be joining us or not. That's really early for California. Um, but anyway, yeah, last night I, it just kind of occurred to me that, you know, Star Trek premiered in 1966. So before we landed on the moon in the heat, in the heart of the, of the space race and the idea of anybody just anybody going to space was absolutely f a fiction and william shatner at the time was just a guy in a cutthroat industry trying to make a living and got cast in this show yeah and was, just an actor went to an audition a, went yep. to an act and got it and was in the show for a couple of years and like as far as his perspective it was a blip on the radar of his career for a long time until syndication happened and now, because of that show, we have a show, and we honestly, frankly, our friendship is uh, the group of uh, of us is basically based almost entirely on Star Trek. At least that's how it started. For, <laughs> certainly for Brian and myself, it's a good end to be sure. And uh, and now, and now he's on this rocket, about ready to actually go to space because of that show. It's pretty, pretty freaking profound. I mean, that's pretty exceptional. Yeah, I mean, considering the fact that like his only qualification is that he was on a TV show with a, yeah. with a starship captain, like, that's awesome. And that's sort of the hope of sp of space travel, right? The idea that <coughs> anybody can go whenever, just cause. Right, but like, and like, think. I mean, like, at he... the moment, it's you have to be famous, but <laughs> right, of course, and, or filthy, filthy rich. Right. Um, but even still, like, think about it in the in the sixties. We, we had never, we were just in our infancy in terms of space travel. And he's 90 years old. The guy's 90 years old and was a, a, just as enamored as everybody else was um, with the space race back in the 60s. And now he's stepping into a spaceship, an actual spaceship. I just, <laughs> it, it's just, it's, it's mind blowing to me. That's, it's that's fun awesome. to think about the fact that he has been, as an adult, watched the entirety of essentially our space history, right? are yeah like from the very beginning like he's just kind of watched it all unfold and is now getting the chance to jump up and go in so and it's just incredible and you know what's interesting about the uh uh the blue origins capsule i think this is, is this a shepherd i think yeah i think so. um it's the size of the windows on that spacecraft are are like that, that that's the difference between like uh dragon which is uh, functional and and meant for astronauts and blue origin which is meant for space tourism look at the size of these windows on this bad boy and they're everywhere oh yeah i think i think it's awesome well, i mean that's their that's their pitch right the idea because right. i don't because i don't think 
I'm unfortunately we don't have um, I don't know the that particular capsule as well as I know some of the other ones mm-hmm. in terms of like whether it can do long or if it really is only designed to do the sort of like 10 minutes in space and then come back right back down yeah um, I don't know so you, like you they, probably you probably need a very specific thruster package <laughs> if you're going to be going into orbit um, who knows if it actually I mean I know that. I know the I know the rocket can't go I'm pretty sure the right. rocket can't like do full-on travel but like if the capsule doesn't need to be up that long then it may have may have a little bit easier design requirements and thus they can put just more windows and stuff on there for sure um, yeah yeah you're probably I mean, right it's billed as a tourist so like the idea is like, what would be the point of having a tourist capsule that only has like one window right <laughs> <laughs> um uh, oh, you know more about about uh, space vehicles and such than I do. So um, the oh, what was the what was now now the question I just had is is escaped me. Uh, I don't know more about your oh, questions. The the li- <laughs> the the <laughs> line with which they are uh, crossing the Karaman line is that how it's pronounced? Do you know? Mm, is, I'm not uh, sure. I'm bad at pronunciation. Okay, fair enough. But you know the the, the line that su- supposedly delineates. Um, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Yep. Earth's atmosphere from space. Mm-hmm. Um, I, every time I read something about it, it says like most experts agree, or sometimes it'll even say some as, uh, astronomers or astronauts or whatever space uh, experts agree. It, mm-hmm. th- so is that is it not a universally accepted line of delineation for from? I mean, I I have difficulty. I'm, like I don't know much about the controversy around it. If that like controversy might be too strong a word. Um, I'd imagine trying to delineate exactly where space begins. I can't imagine everybody has been like, it's exactly this space. Cause also like the earth is not the same height everywhere. So yeah, that's fair. Like, <clears throat> so there's probably like, I mean, I think the line is designated by sea level, which a lot of things are, but I, I'd imagine it's just nitpicking over little bits here and there. Um, but I don't know much about the thing. I know that I, I just know it's like a hundred kilometers. Like that's the sort of rough number that pops yeah. in my head. <clears throat> yep, yep. The, the other thing that Travis and I were talking about just before we started recording was uh, the fact that the there's no elevator to to get the crew up to up to the capsule, and so uh, some of the footage that they showed was the crew, uh, you know, walking up these stairs to get to the uh, get to the personnel capsule, and uh, just to see William Shatner, this 90 year old man, walking up those stairs, and he was at the head of the line too. He was he was leading the pack, and he he looks great. I can't I. He doesn't have the fragility of a of one that one might expect of a ninety year old individual, and that's uh, that's good to see. He took those stairs like a champ. Well, they wanted to get the like the footage of him walking up, so I remember seeing I tracked the the camera guy going up right before him with like the camera pant like following him up the stairs. Yeah, yeah. Like, we got to get some B roll, and we don't want to make him walk up and down these stairs multiple times. So I, I wonder. The other thing I was wondering is because they pose for pictures every now and then. If anybody asked him or tried to get them to do the Vulcan salute um, for mm. for the launch, but Shatner can't do it, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I wonder if He's he, like, he nope. that idea right from the beginning. Do not ask me to do the Vulcan salute because I won't, because I can't. Of course, he wouldn't say he can't, but <laughs> I choose not to, out of respect for Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a small rocket compared to like the Dragon launch vehicle, don't you think? Yeah, I mean it's. Yeah, it's specifically designed not to go all the way up. It's it was it's built spe- for a specific purpose, and that's all it needs. So I like it. Sure. I like the rocket. Like I think it, I mean like it's clearly a giant penis, even more than most <laughs> rockets are. <laughs> it um, is, but if that's the but if that's the most efficient way to get your rocket yeah. to space, then that's the most of it. The fact that yeah. it's phallic is not its fault. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's just how aerodynamics work. And so. <laughs> yeah. So you you also brought up a good an interesting point um, in our in our group chat yesterday that um, this is exciting because if if you know if, assuming all things go well then this will expand the the pool for potential candidates that to go to space because you're talking about a 90 year old individual you know getting in this yeah. rocket going up and coming down so and it's one of those it's like that step between theoretical and and practical right like in theory we knew that someone could probably go up you know in their 60s and their 70s and their 80s and still be able to make it back right i mean we we have enough data to assume that that's fine but actually seeing a 90 year old go up and come back it's like okay no i that's cool 
but it yeah again it was mostly my own selfishness of going like i want to go to the space at some point and oh, totally like i'm not 20 anymore it'd be nice to know <laughs> that i have a little bit more time than i thought that i <laughs> have to get there so it'd be nice to know that after you pass 20 you have a 70 year yeah. window to make it um exactly. it is interesting that blue origin has the uh with back-to-back -back flights set the record for oldest individual going into space 82 was their first first one who is who is the individual yeah. Um, oh, I don't know the person's oh, name. I forget. I forget. I'm, yeah. I'm only going to remember Shatner because it's Shatner. So. Yeah. Oh, the door is getting locked. Yep. Bezos had to be the one to lock it. So. Of course he was. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> they just described him as an experienced space traveler. <laughs> I don't know if three minutes makes you experience. I mean, he has yeah. some experience. But three, does that make three, you experienced? Yeah, three minutes at a, a apparently debatable space line. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, 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 and by the way, you are not in charge of the capsule at all. You have nothing to do with the with the actual <laughs> control of this vehicle. Though, in terms of uh, Tempest and sponsors, we love Jeff Bezos. Oh we're yes, big, Jeff, we're yes. big fans. <laughs> Blue Origin, please sponsor Star Trek Tempest. No, you we will want, no. We will name a ship Red Origin for you. <laughs> Oh, red. oh, you're breaking. Not red origin. That's the wrong color to put, <laughs> to put on something. <clears throat> Speaking of, did you see the um, the Photoshop that was going around? Because there's a million memes. Um, this is another, yeah. Uh, with the where they had the color, where they had colored all the suits red except for his. And... Except for his, his yeah. was gold. Yeah, that was that was brilliant. <clears throat> um, but you know, this is weird because. It's a launch to space, and it is, it's been a very understated event so far. Like, it's not getting the traction, which is, I imagine, why Blue Origin, this, let's call it what it is. This is a publicity stunt for Blue Origin to put Shatner into space. Um, oh, absolutely. And I, yeah. And, and that's fine. Do what you got to do. I mean, and it, it's brilliant. Yeah, Musk, Musk launched a Tesla into space for no reason, but PR. Right. So, like, it's, <clears throat> so yeah, game. there's, there's nothing but there's nothing bad about it at all i'm obviously we're covering this right now ourselves because of it so it's really um the fact that space travel launching to humans to space has become so trivial is both um great that it's that commonplace now you know that's that's where we want to be with that the fact that it is commonplace but it's also yeah. kind of sad i mean <laughs> there's not the buzz wasn't around it i read something on blue origin's own page that there were something like 18,000 viewers for their first, uh, no, for, for this, like 18,000 people were, were watching it as compared to the hundreds of thousands that watch a SpaceX launch. And it might just be yeah. that they don't have the, um, they don't have the network, the publicity network available to them that, that SpaceX does. Um, yeah. I mean, SpaceX has, has gotten the hype a lot. So I think that, I mean, right. I'm looking at their, I'm on their feed right now um, and it's at 135,000. Okay. Well, that's There's good. People that's great. Currently tuned in, so yeah. Um, and, and we are them. Uh, where did you where do you see that number? Is it on the YouTube channel? Yeah, or... on the, on their YouTube. It just oh, says just, thirty five thousand four hundred and seventy one watching now. Thirty five or one hundred thirty five. One thirty five. Sorry. Good. Cool. Fifteen minutes left. Uh oh, wait. They held. Yeah, they're on a hold. They're on a so, hold. Great. Yep. I didn't see that. Um, yeah, and Travis, you have a hard you have a hard cut off at nine forty five. You said. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, my my normal start time at work is eight thirty, but. Um, I'm allowed. I'm, I have flex time, so like I can come in late and stay late, but I have a meeting that I have to run at ten. So it's like I need oh. 10, 15 minutes to prepare for that. I got you. So. And um, if you're listening to us and wondering where Tara is, she and the boys are en route to St. Louis right now. Um, oh, what's we, that about? We, well, uh, Emily, our my cousin and our uh, our guest, uh, our guest appearance that on one of the previous supplemental episodes, um, she's getting married in uh, on Wednesday. No, I'm sorry, on Saturday. So we're making our way down to St. Louis. I had to. I'm sorry, to Oklahoma City. So Tara and the kids are going down to St. Louis, um, hitting uh, hitting a hotel there, and then driving to Oklahoma City for the rest of uh, tomorrow. And I will be flying after work tomorrow to go. So cool. Um, anyway, that's why it's uh, very quiet here, and I am the only <laughs> human in my house at the moment, which is very unusual for me. Let's record several episodes. Go. <laughs> <laughs> and Tara would not like that. <laughs> she would not. No. Um, and they'd be much less entertaining episodes. So. It, it, yeah, indeed. Uh, so randomly, I threw on the movie Gattaca last night. Just Gattaca. I yeah. haven't seen it. You know that? <clears throat> oh, really? It's a mm -hmm. solid. It like it 
holds up very well. It was like 97, I want to say, mm-hmm. but it's, it's a really good future sci-fi thing. Um, and yeah, like one of the, the cruxes of that is that the space flights are happening every day. There's like a dozen flights. And so like the main character is going through a ton of effort and trickery and doing all these things to try and go to space, but he's not allowed because he hasn't been genetically modified. Um, and so he's like doing all this stuff. And one of the things is like, he goes out and watches every single one and no one else there cares or watches. Cause it's like so commonplace. Right. Um, yeah. And I was like, yep. We're, it feels weird that in, when it came out in the late nineties, I remember seeing it and going like, I can't imagine that ever feeling normal. And yet here we are Yeah, <laughs> where it's, here we are. it's you know, not quite to normal yet, but it's getting there. I mean, that was the whole point of the space shuttle was to make space flight normal. Um, yeah. The problem with the space shuttle is that it was the most complicated vehicle ever, <laughs> ever created by man. And yeah. that uh, obviously had its own problems. Um, but since, since the space shuttle was retired, um, you know, I felt like there was that, that long period where the only thing going up with, was the Soyuz where, and because it was always launching, it was not launching from American soil. It was out of the American uh, media's minds in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, and now that we have all of this, this basically, you know, commercialization of the space industry, this is uh, with the United States being, uh, a, a, you know, a leader in that, in that endeavor. That's obviously it's much more in our mind as a, as a nation. And, but the thing is, is like, it's already, it's already gone the other direction like the pendulum has already swung it went from well we're not hearing anything and then oh we're hearing a bunch about spacex and now it's it's getting to the point now it's commonplace yeah yeah so well i mean yeah i mean that i think that speaks to some degree of just how media particularly in this country works right like it it's new and exciting until we've seen it once and now now it's not going to be talked about because it's not new and exciting anymore I mean, that, that's why they had to stick William Shatner in there, right? So that they could get some media coverage because otherwise no one cares if a Blue Origin rocket takes five people up to the edge of space and back. It's like, we've done that a bunch of times. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, what's next? Um, and like, I think every launch is cool, but I'm not Likewise. the one, you know, running a running a media empire. So, so what... I have their so I have their feet up and then just like just I just hear William Shatner over the the radio for this I launch. It it's just yeah. weird. <laughs> <laughs> it is very weird. So now they're on a uh, they're still stopped at T minus fifteen uh, with a hold of six and a half minutes in climbing. So um, I, I imagine it's due to wind. I haven't been listening uh, very acutely to their broadcast, uh, but nor have I. I know it was yesterday. They they canceled it. They scrubbed it because of winds aloft. Well, we're just gonna have to see. Hopefully, it starts counting here in the next few minutes. So, what would you do uh, for? Um, I don't have a large bucket list as a as a human being. I have a a couple things that I do want to see. I want to see the rainforests. I want to um, see a whale. I've never seen a whale. That seems like a weird bucket list item, but I've never seen no, a whale in my life. It's legit. Um, so, uh, and I want to go to space. Those are three things that I uh, I have off the top of my head. Obviously, that's one of yours is going to space. I imagine. Oh yeah. Do you have any others? Honestly, I don't really. No, not really. Um, yeah. Like I want to go to space simply just because it's been such a big part of my life, like in general. Yeah, I don't know if it, yeah, I don't know if we've mentioned before, but you you used to work in the space industry, so if, uh, yep. I mean, if for our listeners at home who didn't know that Travis was a uh, was a member of yep. the space team. I was a ground operations engineer for the shuttle program for uh, near the end. Um, I can't remember, I think it was like five five or so years, four or five years. Um, and then the space shuttle retired. So that job no longer existed. <laughs> so Yeah, that must have been heartbreaking. Um, I mean, so what's weird is I took the job like be- when the like near the end date already and they had like pushed it out already so like the the scheduled end date was actually before i even started working there but because oh. government programs regularly get sort of like pushed because they're tough to cancel um they kept pushing it back and so i knew like i knew the end date was coming but i'm not going to turn down that job for that reason right like that'd be dumb right yeah so how, so, how long do you think you ended up working on it uh, i think it was like four or five years um i think i did 13 or 14 missions um 
I have to, I still have to do that. They like go around and give you a patch. Like everybody who's working there and like, you know, the company, you know, NASA just hands out patches to everybody. So that you know that you were a part <laughs> of this particular mission. Um, so like I have them sitting in a box, like, like I'm literally like the box right now sitting in my closet where it's like, I have a patch for every single one of the, the missions that I was part of. And I mean, meaning to like put them into a box or something like into a frame to hang yeah. them up, to be like, these are all the pieces, but like, the, I haven't seen those. I'd love to, t- I'd love to see those. That's so, right. yep, but, how, how many are there? Uh, I think it's, it's somewhere in the teens. I can't remember the exact number off the top that's of my head. Really, that's really awesome. Yeah. That's very the cool. only one that like really stands out to me that I can remember specifically is the, uh, the Coppola module at the ISS, the giant new window that you basically get all the new, all the great pictures of. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah um, sure. So I was definitely, I worked there during that. So like, that's one of the, the pieces of the ISS that I can specifically be like that one that people know I helped make that happen. Like that's in awesome. my small, in my small, tiny way. So yeah, that's and you you help facilitate one of the coolest moments in my life. We have a uh, all of us have a, a mutual friend who works in the space industry, and um, when Logan was born, there was a photo taken that made its way to Facebook because my wife is Tara, and um, that face that our our friend uh, who works in uh, at NASA got that photo and beamed it up to the ISS, had them print it out, and took a picture of the of us as a family of five floating in that in that in that window yep so it's awesome it's, teamwork it, it, and now it, now it's blown <laughs> up that 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 picture uh, the picture of the picture um of my family uh floating in front of that window with the earth in the background is now blown up on, on our wall um so yeah uh, travis you are indirectly responsible for that photo and you can indirectly take it. take it away from me <laughs> <laughs> oh well, next Brian's time gonna... next time i come over i'm gonna take it I'm gonna take very it. good all right everybody and... let's get some photos and now our fearless leader is joining us. All right, I quit. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Brian. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> uh, uh, we are rec- seven thirty your time. Yes. It's not that early. Yeah. No, and I I did set a um uh an alarm uh with Alexa and must have just completely shut it off <laughs> without even waking up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've done that many, 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 many times. So that's why I, yeah. I set I set six, seven alarms every single day just to get my ass out of bed because <laughs> one will not do. Um, yeah, well, I'm not a morning person. I well, I would actually get out of bed except. Oh you yeah, have a cat you have on giant, you. You have a giant cat <laughs> on your on your person. It's actually um, a small one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if you're caught up, Brian, or if you're watching, but they're they're on a hold right now t minus 15 minutes uh we covered uh, some ground that we talked about yesterday uh in our in our group chat about how the you know the fact that william shatner going into space is like it's a big it's a bigger deal than i think you know the memes that are floating around the internet are are are, are presenting it it's it's pretty freaking incredible um, uh ha- have has anybody mentioned the fact that the the rocket looks like a penis yet oh yes we have yep. we have covered we, covered we have covered the penis <laughs> the penis thank you for your for your high-end <laughs> intellectual coverage Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this one hasn't been no this one has been used before hasn't it is the shepherd the one i don't know if this well, is the, is the rocket class is. it's not the yeah. individual ship well i thought yeah. okay so so the glenn and the shepherd are two different classes of vehicle Correct. Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. See, that's good to know. I didn't realize that. Um, um, but I know, I know theirs are completely reusable, so it's entirely possible this one has flown before. It looks like it's it looks been like used. it's singed at the bottom. Yeah. But I don't know if that's just test flight, you know, test runnings prior oh, to. Sure. I don't know. I have, I have no <laughs> idea how these things work. So. Maybe they paint it that way just to make it look cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just, yeah they just they Disney make it, it look a little bit like distressed jeans they're just yeah. like, you just got to make it look like they've been worn a few times <laughs> gonna paint flames at the bottom of the rocket yeah. like on a on a, like on a hot rod yeah um legitimately i'm a little t- disappointed that no that no rocket has had flames painted on the side yet like that seems like something that that musk or bezos would do Oh yeah, Bezos got uh, he, he he crashed the party. I don't know. You don't know if you saw the earlier coverage, Brian. Um, mm-hmm. But he he showed up in his flight suit to greet everybody. Uh oh, somebody else is joining us. If it's Matt, I'm leaving. Oh, it's Matt. All right, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Oh, we missed it because or he missed it because his audio wasn't connected. All right, say hi, Matt. Hi, hi Matt. <laughs> <laughs> 
you're at uh, you're yeah. at home today. I am. I'm home all week because I'm great. Oh, oh, that <laughs> yeah. because perfect. you're great. I love yeah. it. Okay. Where's this? Uh, where's the live stream? Is it on? Um, look at me. I'm Jeff Bezos. I have the biggest dick. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <coughs> no it's at blue origins it's blue origins youtube page that's what uh, i think that's what both travis and i are, are watching on they're on a hold right now they they stopped the clock at t minus 15 and now they've been on a 15 minute hold due to wins i think i'm assuming because that's uh -huh. what canceled that's what canceled it yesterday yeah i'm not seeing any updates to say what the hold is on but uh, where do they the, launch from he left us from like nebraska or something stupid right Oh, is it Texas? I thought it was Utah for some reason. Yeah, I thought it was somewhere weird. Well, now that there's uh, many oh. people here, I'm leaving. I'm just going <laughs> to get coffee. I'll be right back. He's going to finish his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see a thumbs up by someone in the window. Here's hoping that that means they start moving here soon. What was I going to say? I was going to say something. And I've forgotten now. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. That, that's my cool. single contribution. <laughs> so I'm trying to like find what the hold is for um, by checking Twitter. Uh, and apparently like it's actually getting a decent amount of coverage. Uh, like CNN and, and whatnot are all like running with it live at the moment, which is exciting. Oh, really? We, we, were, we were talking earlier about how like normalized the space flights have become and no one, this really has not had much hype around it so like apparently it is actually getting a fair amount of media coverage at the moment so sending kirk to space apparently worked for them that way did you guys watch uh anderson cooper interviewed him a few days ago no i missed it how'd it go uh, <laughs> cooper was laughing like a little <laughs> like a little child basically at everything um <laughs> did he mention the shatter action figures he did up? Well, that is just disappointing news then. Then I, you know what? I think they should cancel the launch. Maybe that's why they're on a hold is because they're trying to get him to talk about the Shatner action figures and he refuses. <laughs> well, that, that I could buy. <laughs> yeah, that he refuses to talk about it? Yeah, I would buy yes. that too. <laughs> um, so Travis and I covered it a little bit uh, earlier, um, but uh, part of the reason why I wanted to to get this recorded or get get this group together online and watch this is just because if you think about how incredibly what how crazy it is that when star trek aired in 1966 the, the space industry was it was in its fledgling state and it was really more fiction than science and then this guy was just working on in hollywood trying to make his ends meet and got cast in this show and there was just a job for him for a couple of years and now because of that show we have a show we're all friends he has a ride to space and mm -hmm. he got to see that whole thing happen in in the span of you know 60 years or whatever it was that's that's yeah well he also especially got to see that we got together to have our own our own podcast yeah, that's, that, that, that's the biggest accomplishment of his career, I think. I, I'm sure that affects him deeply. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just sitting there thinking, it's like, this is a more profound moment and than, than I think. I, I'm glad to hear that the media coverage has really expanded, at least today. Uh, I don't think it was that yeah. big yesterday. It was supposed to launch yesterday, and I feel like it wasn't, it wasn't present online. Uh, I, mm. um, but now because charlie hagedorn our, 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 we have a mutual friend that we've met through uh through dragon con and he, he posted uh on twitter or uh, facebook it says wait shanner's actually going to space i thought that was just a meme and that was yesterday after he was supposed to have already been to space and back so yeah the fact that it's uh, i think people are like oh this is actually happening oh that's that's right. cool well that how cool. how late into um Oh, the count started uh, again. Oh, good. Delay. Like, how how far before it was supposed to launch was it delayed until today? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was I mean, it was supposed to launch yesterday, right? And got delayed to today. Right. But I don't know if that was. I don't know if yesterday was delayed from an earlier date or not. But you're asking Brian, how soon to launch did they call it? Exactly. Yeah. How how. Yesterday, did they know that they were not launching yesterday? 
uh, I, I don't know. I found I found out that it was pushed after, you know, well after it was supposed to have already Why? returned. I, so. I mean, I found from you. I was like, oh, it's supposed to be yesterday. Oh, I had no idea. I barely yeah. knew. Hey. So apparently, the, um, the <laughs> they got the word out that it was canceled much more effectively than they got the word out that it was going to be launched. So. <laughs> Maybe it was maybe that was a political stunt. Maybe maybe the the winds were actually perfect yesterday, and they're like, we don't have enough coverage. We should we should we should cancel. We should cancel. Yeah. Uh, the viewership on the YouTube is up to one hundred and seventy one thousand people. So that's awesome. Yeah. It, I know. Um, <clears throat> like, there's about three other news outlets that are co-streaming this too. I know CNBC, um, CNN, Fox News all had it on their YouTube channels too. And I was searching for it. So. Yeah, it's starting to get up there. How, how much of it do you think is is macabre in nature? Like people just oh, a fair amount, I imagine. <laughs> just want to see, yeah, yeah. Just, just want to just want to see the end times of William Shatner. <laughs> I mean, I part of me thinks that that's a a hefty portion of why they do any coverage of rocket launches at this point, right? Like, mm. like if if you're going to cover, like, is it newsworthy that this particular group of humans is going to space when? x number of humans have already gone and come back safely like there's got to be some level of we want to be there because if something goes wrong it's going to be newsworthy and we want to have coverage of it yeah like like, as much as a cold calculation as editorial judgment goes i'd imagine there's at least some part of it like if it really was so routine that we never believed that anything could go wrong they probably would not cover it nearly as much as they do oh yeah it's like they don't cover every airplane taking off and landing right so yeah well some of us do brian (laughs) <laughs> oh you miss one every now and then admit it <laughs> it's not not enough to affect the statistics <laughs> oh, so i'm not gonna lie even even for something i love as much as space flight promotional videos still i just find grating to know they're things. awful they're yeah. atrocious oh you guys think so yeah, yeah. i just they, oh, no. they just, it's it's the combination of like the cheesy inspirational music they always have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just it, off. It just feels like such forced sincerity for every single thing in it. And like, ugh. Especially yeah. with like with space flight stuff, it's it it still feels like it all has this patina of like nineteen eighties space inspiration of like, look how inspiring the space shuttle is when you know, we just went to the moon. It's like they're trying to get people excited about the space shuttle, and the space shuttle is a space truck, and its whole point yeah. is to be a truck. But it's still inspiring. One great leap for blood. It's like no, guys, <laughs> it's a space truck, and that's fine. You built a space truck. You were trying to build a space truck, so you built a space truck. Great, but don't act like the space truck is, you know, the Starship Enterprise because it's not. Yeah. Yeah. And now, and now they're doing it for these where they're like, oh, look at this brand new, super inspiring thing. And it's like, yeah, no, we've, we've launched capsules for much longer than everything else. So yeah. Hey, they're, they're doing a go countdown. Yeah. Ooh. Um, I can't seem to get the, uh, the stereo recording on my, on my thing. So we're not going to have the audio from the YouTube channel, but oh, well, uh, well, well, I'll just to scrub. <laughs> All right. Well, we gotta, we gotta go at eight minutes. So. <laughs> Looks like the countdown's going. Do you think Shannon just got annoyed with how long Virgin Galactic is taking? Because I know he bought a <laughs> ticket to that right when they got on set like five years ago. I forgot about that. I really yeah, wish probably. they would pick up the pace because I got stock in that company. So come on, guys. Mm-hmm. Do you? I don't know. Is Virgin Galactic public? Virgin Galactic is public. I think it's S-T-C-E. Oh. Ah. Well, put it this way: I, I have I have stock in SPCE, whatever the hell that company is. <laughs> <laughs> I assumed it was Virgin Galactica. So I will I will say I was sort of degrade I was you know talking down to the idea of like promotion videos, but I will point out that like SpaceX entire thing about launching a handful of just you know mostly regular people up to space, like that actually was better. Like still the five minute promo videos I found super annoying, but conceptually it's like yeah you're sending up people like you're not not a celebrity not like you're just sending up people which is cool and that like that i find interesting still definitely the best um at that sort of thing and i'm not just saying that because i know the people who do the video stuff at at spacex but uh, they're <laughs> do, you, 
Do you know those people? Hmm. A little bit. Three years, mate. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Still, still, still many people, but yeah. Yeah. Still, generic promo videos. Almost of all, not just space flight, but like all generic promo videos. I find super annoying. But everybody else genuinely annoyed because I'm a little bit, and I understand it's not reasonable, but I am still a little bit that William Shatner is wearing blue. <laughs> <laughs> of the three colors he could wear, it has to be blue. You, you did see the, the meme going around there. Of course, of course, yeah. No, no, but I, like the, the point of that for me is that it looked, he looked really good in gold, in the, <laughs> in the gold blue origin. <laughs> I'm, so if, if the entire concept of this was that it's a PR stunt, um, you'd think that they would have just made that change, right? And been like, no, we'll just give him a gold shirt. Because like the fabric doesn't matter, so. or at least at least the undershirt. Like, see, because they're all yeah. wearing different color undershirts. So, um, he could have. They could have done that. They're not going to change the 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 blue origins flight suits to some color other than blue. Well, if they were smart, they'd have him in gold. And they'd have someone else in the standard blue origin shirt. <laughs> someone in a um, in red. Uh, in a red one, and that person actually gets strapped to the outside of the capsule. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to die. Uh, I mean, help for all for all we know, he was like, "I'm not doing this to be a Star Trek thing." Like he could have been yeah. like, "No thanks." Yeah. Yeah. Got an ultimatum. Like, if you make me wear a yellow gold thing, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Travis and I covered a little bit earlier that we uh, we also, I'm assuming at some point he he said, do not ask for a picture with the uh, live long and prosper symbol because uh -huh. I cannot do it. He didn't say that, but he's like, because I will not do it. <laughs> it's probably what he said. Uh, four minutes. T minus five. Perfect. I guess we're. Uh, yeah, you're you're cutting in and out, Brian. Of. Uh, nope, didn't hear anything, Brian. Cool. Uh, that's a shame because that was really insightful. I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> it, it always uh, is when we can't hear yeah. you. Um, well, I just caught just a bit of your commentary. I, my my thing is on mute, but um, uh, all all I caught was like the the sentence fragment. How important it is to go to space, or like this shows the importance of of how important it is go to, to go to space. And like again, going to space is important. I think it's very important. This is not a demonstration of how important it is. <laughs> this yeah. is a demonstration of how it can be not important to go to space and still be yeah. awesome. This yeah. is not right. a profound, awesome, you know, giant leap for mankind. It's a joyride. And that is fucking cool on its own merits entirely. It doesn't have to be giant leap for mankind inspirational. It's it's not an yeah. It's not a profound accomplishment. It's it's supposed to be the exact opposite of that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that, but that's, you're right. I've, that that in and of itself is awesome. Exactly. But that, 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 that's the point. Is like this is not a giant leap for mankind. It's literally a joyride, and that in itself is awesome on its own terms. Yeah. What were we gonna say, Matt? Uh, so I said I read a lot of opinions on, you know, a lot of the private companies like. Blue Origin, SpaceX, and Virgin getting into the space industry and how, you know, well, well why do we need NASA if they're in it? It's like, well, NASA's there for the great step for mankind. These guys are there for, you know, pick up what NASA left behind and do the normal stuff. Yeah. yeah. Which, call it normal, well, you know, do, do the low Earth, Earth, Earth orbit, the orbit stuff. NASA, NASA's in charge of going to the moon and further than that. That's what NASA does, all the crazy stuff. And, and that's not even what Blue Origin does. Blue Origin is literally just we want to does we, not. Yeah, they're like we just this is literally just a scenery trip, and like yeah, it's still cool, but it's also just a scenery trip. It is we're really right. just we, all they're really doing is is testing Newton's laws on a big scale, on a bigger mm -hmm. than normal scale. <laughs> yep. Two minutes. It's like you know, if I go to the Grand Canyon, right? Like it's awesome. I've been to the Grand Canyon. It's an incredible sight and trip. Does not make me Lewis and Clark. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're pulling the, uh, yeah, pulling the gantry. The... <laughs> My brain was like jet bridge. Say jet bridge. <laughs> it's jet bridge. They're pulling the jet bridge away. <laughs> a, a rocket bridge. Rocket bridge. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like that. rocket bridge. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, it sure does look like it's flown. Like it looks like the graphics are a little are a little worn. Yeah, I can't tell if that's on purpose or not because that's clearly yeah. supposed to be a feather, right? Yeah, because yeah. for some reason, for logo. some reason, that's their logo. Um, that's fine, you know. A part of a, a part of a uh, uh, of a machine that is designed to fly that has fallen off. That's that's clever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's nature's thing. The feather is nature's rocket. <laughs> <laughs> It's minute minute countdown. Well, now if I start a space company, it's going to have like the squid propulsion jet thing. <laughs> That's oh, they're, they're testing the yeah the fins. The yeah, yeah. It looks like it's going to go. Oh God, William Shatner is going into space in forty seconds. All right, everybody. Weird. Hey, and this this will negate my favorite piece of Star Trek trivia, which is that um, up until fifty seconds from now. There had only been one person in the entire Star Trek franchise that had both been on Star Trek and actually in space. Yeah. Yeah. And that will cease to be true in 40 seconds. Well, um, it's actually 15 seconds, Brian, so you're behind. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess that's that's <laughs> well, I think he was counting the travel time. <laughs> <laughs> I got five seconds left on my count. Yep. Oh, Ignition. wow. Get out of there! Get out! Oh, my God. There it goes. Oh, you guys are seeing it, and I'm not yet. Yeah, it, it's, it's the time That's delay to, to California, Brian. <laughs> well, yeah, I do love that that drone shot that they get. That right is beautiful. There. It's it looks so fake. Awesome. It looks it so does. fake. It looks like look a Hollywood that. movie. Oh my god! Uh, look at look at two hundred twenty thousand people are watching. That is such a penis I, flying directly into space. Sure, it 200, is. Two hundred twenty thousand people just on the Blue Origin site. So yeah. So yeah, it was I, it was like one of their first launches. They tested that that specific drone shot where the drone is you know a couple hundred feet above the the launch yeah. and like shooting down and it follows it up. And I was like, this looks like it's out of a movie. This does not look like a real life shot. I think I think the only way they can make it better is if like right next to it they launch a floating platform with a <laughs> uh, orchestra playing. <laughs> oh, so. So Brian, you have to take the video of this launching and add the Star Trek theme to it and post it on the on a YouTube page for Tempest. Okay. It's been a long road. <laughs> Getting from the original series. <laughs> Getting Bill from there to here. <laughs> what a so crazy it, stupid thing. It's so stupid and so profound and in in both like Big and small ways alike. This is probably the most disinteresting podcast we've ever produced <laughs> because all we're doing is watching TV. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's at I mean, two hundred and thirty thousand people. So I mean, that, that's a whole, that's an entire like um, <laughs> thing on YouTube. Is people just yeah, watching I, TV? <laughs> I, I had a whole podcast built on that concept for years. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that one too. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to get interior shots of him, right? We must, yeah. Assume so. Him just puke his guts out. Well, did we have, did we have a, <laughs> during the flight last time, or did we only get those after the fact? I don't know. I didn't watch it live last time because uh, William Shatner wasn't on it. So good job, Jeff Bezos. Yeah. It worked. Uh, I think we got him after, like doing pictures yeah. of them weightless and whatnot. Because it's probably too – it's probably too um, – too high of a bandwidth to do live yeah if, if it would it would be like terrible quality and i'd imagine they would not want to stick that out yeah yeah Is seeing william crazy. shatner weightless in there would be awesome like floating around in space <laughs> hey bill how you doing <laughs> what, what's your guys's t plus at the moment because i think mine might have caught three up. minutes exactly three minutes. nope did not catch up oh i'm at three <laughs> i'm a couple seconds behind you two bastards Well, I'm slightly more east than you, Ryan. So that's, that's probably that's true. That is true. <laughs> I'm the most east. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, they are. They they cleared the line at this point. Oh, yeah. Yep. They're slow, they're slowing down at this point. So. Welcome to 
Tara, just, Tara just texted me at a rest stop. Is Shatner in space? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yes, right now. Yes. Is that separation there? Is that the booster? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Say hello to uh, say hello to Tara, everybody. Hey, Tara. Hi, Tara buddy. Tara. Oh, <laughs> uh, she's How in a profound. rest stop. At, oh, they can't hear you, be, or you can't hear them because they're in my ears. Um, oh, okay, well, um, ah, sorry but, about the loud hand dryer. The podcast it's can there. hear you though. Um, All right. Yeah, we just space, did Apogee. Huh? He's 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 right now exactly in space. Like exactly right now. Yep. Wow, I managed to do it. You did. You did it. <laughs> I love right. how he, we said he's in space, and she says I managed to do it. <laughs> Good work. Good work, Tara. All right. Um. So yeah, go, I, I yeah I got to log off. So happy Shatner in space day. Bye, right, right, everyone. Take care, Travis. See you later, bud. This will be like Rex Manning day from now on. All right. So he's in space. He's wow. he's in space. Shatner in space day. Hold on a second. I'm gonna turn off my headphones so now you you should be able to hear them on the speakers say hello boys hello, hello boys what, what are we looking at right now boys what 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 are those two things the one's the capsule one's the booster yeah so the, the booster's on the way down yeah right. well they're both on the way down now i think oh yeah i guess that's right they're not staying up there at all wow that's loud sorry we have noisy hair dryers no, it's okay. Now, see, if if Musk were really smart, he would give, just now, he would announce that he's giving Shatner a free ride on a, on a Dragon capsule, like an actual orbital trip. All right, hon, I'll, I'll call you back, okay, babe? Okay. He, either, either that, he could say, you know what, hey, screw it, I'm getting George Takei and, um, and Walter Koenig together. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what if they got all the surviving members of the crew, of uh, of the bridge crew left to go up on a different mission? <laughs> this is really cool, though. I do. That, there's, I, I have no idea if he even would have gone or wanted to go, but I do wish Nimoy could be there with him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Without without the head on the without the capsule on the shaft. Um, it actually kind of looks like V'ger, the shape of V'ger. Yeah, it looks like a spaceship. It's pretty cool looking. What, the booster or the capsule? The, the, the booster. booster. Uh, on the wider shot, when, it, when you can see the whole thing, it looked like the overall shape of V'ger, the V'ger probe. And it's about 3,600 feet or about 1,200 feet above. Well, maybe not. <laughs> from, yeah, no. from the other angle. That, that, God did. Yeah. Look at that. I Oh, that is, oh my gosh. Look at that drone shot. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. That is real. Yeah, that's actually one of the coolest things with so the cool. way he does it and the way SpaceX does it. You see the boosters land. It is the coolest thing. It's the most sci-fi thing I've ever seen. That's unbelievable. And, and now it falls down. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think like Elon Musk is back in his house? Like Phew. he's watching. Try landing that shit on a boat, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they did hit almost dead center on the bullseye, so they could put it in the ocean. I'm sure. No, no live shots of the crew, though, huh? No. Or maybe that's because something macabre happened. Be that I'm going to assume that's going to happen soon. There it is. Oh, I didn't see it. There they go. I am behind you guys. Oh, uh, both of you are in front of me. And here come the mains. So it doesn't even look singed. Do they not get high enough to 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 burn up at all? No. That's awesome. Hey. Not a question of altitude; it's a question of uh, velocity. The velocity, but that's what I mean. Like they don't get high enough to come back fast enough. Correct. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I think like the most heat show they need is like paint that doesn't come off at 100 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so altitude when it, when it comes to orbit, 
altitude and velocity are directly related. So, Correct. you know, um, an easy way of thinking about it is to, to go to space, you need to go up high. To stay in space, you need to go both up across. and across very quickly. Um, because the the typical ex- the typical way of explaining orbit first is it, it's as if you're falling to the Earth, but you're going so fast that you're falling at the same rate that the Earth is curving away from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Shatner is not doing that here. He's literally just going up in a straight line and, and back down again. He's not going uh, across. He's not going horizontally fast enough to pick up the speed that you would actually have to worry about re-entry heat. It's the difference between like a pop-up and a home run. A pop-up goes, goes up and now a home run goes way far and flies away. For those of for those who like the sports ball. Look at this. And, oh, yeah. and oof. It was like Wile E. Coyote. Touchdown. Welcome back. Oh, that did not look gentle. <laughs> Brian, that, that will in the future not look gentle to you. Okay. <laughs> a day for you. Welcome back. I cannot that wait. That is cool. And just get what they experienced up there this morning. What a clean and beautiful flight from the rocket for our astronauts. What an absolutely stunning. There it is. I loved hearing that audio of them on their way back about how this Oh, I didn't hear any audio of them. It was really, really quiet and really static and bad. This mm. is like but William Shatner's alive? I'm assuming so. They didn't say, oh, my God. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said he's dead, Jim. <laughs> oh, I hope, I hope whoever was in charge of this mission, his name was Jim, for that eventuality. <laughs> Just a bit, maybe even That's pretty great. Day for a launch and landing of a They're just in no hurry to get these guys out of there, apparently. They parked like half a mile away. No, they got to wait for the Coast Guard to show up with a skiff. <laughs> it's been a while since they're in the middle of Texas. <laughs> of course, we have our new astronauts. We have our club in the future. Coast so, Guard. Do, you, do, we, do, you think, do you guys consider William Shatner an astronaut now? Awesome US. It's, a, it's a decent question, right? Because it's there's yeah. an astronaut we're going to have to like narrow down the term of what astronaut means now, because not eyes from, you know, Chicago, Chicago to Albuquerque is a pilot. You, you don't call a passenger of a 737 a pilot. So you have genuine legitimate space passengers. Does the term astronaut apply to them or do we, is there a different term? Do we, do we modify how those terms work? But it, you know, it hasn't been hasn't been a question until our friends a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, up until then, every, um, pretty much every single, yeah, absolutely every single person that's been to space has worked in space. Even what's his head that was the clown that bought his way onto the space station back in the day. Um, well, he worked several, up there. Um, there, there have been several like space tourists over the years. Yeah, um, but. He's getting a thumbs up from everybody. You see that? I saw Shatner's thumbs up. Yeah. I covered tell. comment. Oh, now this guy's literally trying to pull the, the capsule by himself. What? <laughs> he looks Shat- he, n- No, there's some, some guy who looks like he's he's you know from the ground crew at Houston Hobby. Oh, <laughs> he's just tugging on the on the ropes. Oh. Uh- Oh, they're bringing the air stairs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on. Two step. I mean, he is 90, so maybe they don't do those for everyone. Yeah. No, well, oh, you know, because, the red- because he didn't use his muscles for three minutes, they've atrophied. <laughs> <laughs> well, they put down a little carpet. Why? Hey. Because the last thing they need is William Shatner tripping on on some shrubs and and breaking yeah. his neck on the way down. Well, they're hammering their way through. <laughs> what kind of operation <laughs> is this? They're not gonna work. Somebody get the hammer. <laughs> Jerry, did you bring the hammer? Get out of the way! Get out of the way! 
You see these guys? Look at what are they doing? I don't know. Oh, there's TV screen. Get down, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> they they are just, they're pissed because I'm awake, but I haven't fed them yet. Oh yeah, that's oh. well. You are a bad human being because of it. I am. They are about to start eating me. Yeah. No, oh, no. He's so loud. Yeah. The guy looks amazing for 90. For really. 90, he looks pretty good. And we, we, Travis and I talked about this at the front end. Like when he was walking up the stairs, he was leading the pack. He was just fine. He was, he was, <laughs> he had to walk up the stairs to get to into the capsule and he was fine. That guy might live to be 120. Is that Jeff Bezos? Why is Jeff Bezos in a flight suit? Because he's Jeff Bezos. Because <laughs> he wants much like the penis is the spaceship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how I love how William Shatner got the recliner. <laughs> <laughs> they, they put a lazy boy in there just for him. <laughs> how 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 terrified or nervous would you be right before launch if you were? going up mm, probably not as nervous as i get before uh going on stage or, or recording the tempest <laughs> i can't i actually can't tell if you're being serious or not <laughs> you know what neither can i <laughs> i thought you were going to say getting on a plane knowing that i'm in the control tower at working at the airport <laughs> <laughs> that that is the most terrifying thing <laughs> <laughs> come on boys look at the drone hovering over that's kind of fun yeah. look at all of the cars coming why are there so many cars coming Jetner is actually uh, wanted by the FBI uh, <laughs> oh so, he tried yeah. to escape to space he didn't realize it was yeah. just a suborbital flight this is going to be the first <laughs> arrest by the Space Force uh, MPs <laughs> he, he thought he was going to be like that old crazy guy that lives on Mir in uh, contact he just <laughs> forever uh, Armageddon, you mean? No, no, contacts. Uh, that there was that old, like, super rich guy that like had his own space station. Oh, oh, William Hurt, yeah, that's yeah. William Hurt. No, I don't know who that is. He's a little crazy guy. Yeah, he lives. Well, of course, he gets to open the hatch. I had to text Tara to let her know that uh, Shatner's alive. But that, you know that's not that's not special today. You guys do that every day, right? Every single day. Yeah, we yeah. check the news feeds. <laughs> and we confirm with one another. What are these? What are these guys? What are those giant like work boxes? I believe they are called work boxes. Ah, uh, they generally carry tools and other equipment. <laughs> <laughs> they are devices for carrying things. All right, that's that's gonna be us someday, boys. We're gonna get hey, there's Shannon alive. Bill, Bill, Bill. There he is. He's wearing a hat because his toupee fell off. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I'm I'm behind you guys. I still don't see it. Oh, sorry, bud. Spoilers. <laughs> there he is. Now I see him. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoyed this supplemental episode of Starship Tempest. Now, if you could, please keep an eye on our social media pages. You can find us under the handle Starship Tempest, or you can search for us under the hashtag Starship Tempest, as we will be putting out updates pretty shortly about Season 2 and when you can expect the very first mission to go live. But before all that, we have found ourselves in the very familiar position of needing to thank you, the listeners. We just eclipsed 16,000 downloads. We keep growing, and we couldn't be more appreciative. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next time, we'll see you out there.